it's exciting to pre present our work here. This work is joined with my chair, Jin Yao Feng Zibo from Wuhan University and Xiao Feng from Xidian University. Okay, the pat pattern lock has been widely used in mobile devices. According to a survey, more than 40% of participants use pattern lock as a screen lock, and around 33% of other participants often use pattern lock as identity authentication on apps. So there are many security mechanisms has been developed to ensure the this, this, screen of device cannot be captured by other apps. For example, the sandbox and the trust zoom. Unfortunately, apps can still can access some shared hardware resource, resources so that they are generate some side channel information and attack can infer unlock patterns by leveraging such uh, information. The shared hardware including GPS, uh, microphone, and a speaker, etc. And there are some attack uh, to try to crack pin code by leveraging such side channel if information. For example, we can leverage uh, the motion sensor data to infer the location of taps on screens, and we can leverage the camera to estimate the orientation of changes and correlate the changes to the position of the taps digitals on the screen. And there are some, a number of checks to the pattern lock. So we can leverage the OLA residues left to screen to infer the unlock patterns, and we can also leverage the Wi-Fi hotspots and the footage that to recover the pattern lock. Unfortunately, such attack is quite sensitive to the in environment, and the effectiveness of the attack is, can be uh, interfered by the environment. So in this paper, we propose pattern listener, a novel attack that to try to crack pattern locks by leveraging imperceptible acoustic signals. So basically, we, let, we uh, use a malware to generate signals and infer the pattern lock by analyzing the signal reflect by fingertips on screen. So by such approach, we can possible to collect signals from wireless uh, phones, and then we can easily infer unlock patterns of large number of phones simultaneously. So our attack is quite unique. First, the attack is quite stealthy because we generate imperceptible signals so that the user cannot either catch such uh, signal. And secondary, our attack is robust because the attack does not impact by the environment. And thirdly, the attack is practical because we do not have a strict uh, uh, requirement for launch attack. The last but not least, our attack is scalable because we can uh, crack or recover a, the pattern lock of a large number of phones simultaneously. Here's the outline of our attack. First, we need a malware installed in the victim phones. The malware basically detects the unlock behavior of the users. After that, it will generate uh, the acoustic signals and it will record the signals reflect by the fingertips and upload uh, the signal to a server so that the server can analyze the signals to recover the pattern lock of the users. Here, let's take a look how we can detect the unlock behaviors of the users. So we have two typical approach to detect the, the users of unlock behaviors. First, we can capture the broadcast state transition information. Basically, if a phone is locked, the phone will be in, in non-active mode. So if we capture the state in transition information, we can understand, OK, the, the user may want to unlock his phone. And secondly, we can possibly de to detect the read actions. So basically, the read actions indicate the user want to unlock his phones. After un detect the unlock behavior, we can uh, allow the ask uh, 
uh, the malware to generate acoustic signals through speakers. And in meanwhile, we will trigger the microphones to record the signals reflected by the fingertips. So the signal is a continuous wave of A sine 2 pi ft. Uh, the reason is in, in this way, we can possibly demodulate the signal and we can accurately analyze the signals reflected by the fingertips. And the frequency is set to the range of 18 and uh, 20. The reason that in this frequency, normally people cannot capture or uh, hear such signals. Here is an example of record acoustic signals. So by the signal, if the signal is interfered by the fingertips, it will lead to significant, uh, we can observe that the, the significant change in the waves. And after uh, capture the signals reflect by fingertips, uh, we can upload the, the, the signal, the record signal to our servers. Then the server can pre-process the sound signals and obtain the components corresponding to the finger motions. We extract the envelopes of record signals to, to capture the signal and analyze the signal. So basically, we can leverage the coherent de detection to demodulate the signals uh, and uh, obtain the co-phase and the orthogonal components. Basically, we multiply the sine and the cosine function to obtain the components. And after that, we can segment the CON components into fragments co corresponding to each line in the uh, user's patterns. We can observe that uh, the acoustic signal reflect by the fingertip is relatively stable in a turning points of between each line so that we can accurate to uh, segment the components. And after that, we, we can possible to compute the phase change of the signal so that we can pass to recover the, the fingertip movement. We observe that the CO movement are similar to sine and cosine curves. And if we map the CO trace in two dimensional space, the trace forms a circle, uh, or a circle shapes. And then we can possibly calculate the accumulated degree of rotation of each node in the curve. Here the node means the starting point or the ending point of the each line. And then we can obtain the value of the phase changes. And then we can convert, convert the phase change into a change of the path length of signals reflected by the fingertips. Here the path means uh, the distance between the fingertip and the speakers plus the distance between fingertip and the microphones. So that by computer, by using such uh, these equations, we can compute the, the path change. Then after that, we can try to infer where the, the, the fingertip movement. So we build a ground truth and compute each, each vector for each node in the power grid according to a distance to other nodes. Then we can compare the attract feature vectors of path change with the ground truth. And then we can uh, calculate the similarity of the each lines. Actually, there are two cases of path computations. One is the fingertip is in the different side of microphone and the speaker. And the other case is the fingertip in the same side of microphone speaker. Actually, these two cases are similar when we compute the similarities. After that, we can possibly match all the candidates of each line into the pattern grid to generate the pattern trees. Here, the, each edge or each line in the trees indicates the similarity of each candidate lines. And then we can pass, we can choose the top five patterns with higher similarity as the candidate patterns so that we have five tries to uh, vary if the inferred patterns are correct. Okay, here's the ex implementation of the evaluations. So we implement the deploy 
a malware in Samsung C9 Pro and Huawei P9 Plus. And we analyze the signal data in a commodity servers. And we have a 130 collect patterns from volunteers. And the sample rate of collecting signals is 48. Here is the overall accuracy. So if we have one sample and uh, with one attempt, our attack achieve accuracy of around uh, 58%. And if we collect, have more attempts, for example, we have five attempts, the accuracy reached around 95%. So if we have more samples, that means we collect more signals with different users twice, we almost achieve 100% of accuracy. Now here shows the impact of the pattern complexities. Normally user want to say, okay, if the pattern has more lines, it means more security. However, in our attack, the, the result is, is shows that if the user has more lines in his patterns, we, ha we have more accuracies. So the accuracy is higher for if the line, if the patterns include more lines. Uh, he, now we measure the impact of gestures. Normally user has uh, these three gestures to input their pattern, patterns. So we can observe that the gesture one achieve the, fast, the, the best accuracy and the worst is the gest, gesture three. The reason is that just one, we can possibly capture one more signal to analyze, to recover the, the patterns. And we also evaluate the impact of the drawing speed. So we found that the drawing speed indeed impact the accuracy of the, our attack. But the, the impact is, sli is only uh, a slight impact. So the speed has my slight impact on the pattern interference. The distance, the difference is bound by 5%. So here we also evaluate the impact of surrounding objects. Basically in this experiment, we have two types of objects. One is static objects. That means we put hands near around the phones and evaluate if the hand, if, uh, impact uh, the accuracy of the attack. And also we have moving objects. That means we uh, PR moving around the, the hand, moving around the, the phones and the, evaluate the, uh, effect, the impact. We can observe that the cracking accuracy is almost not affected by static objects, but the, it's indeed impacted by the moving objects. But as long as the distance uh, between uh, the distance between the the moving objects and the phone is uh, increase, then the the effect of the moving objects will quickly decrease. Then uh, here is a result of the impact of a smartphone and the noises. We uh, launch attack in a cave and in an office, and we also use two models of the mobile phones, one is Huawei phone and another is Samsung phone. We say that the noise does not impact accuracy significantly, uh, but the different phones indeed have different uh, accuracies. Uh, we, see, we can see the accuracy on P9 Plus has slightly lower accuracies. The reason is the, the P9, Huawei P9, Plus has a slightly smaller screens. The smaller screens means we get get less signals to infer the pattern. Okay, here are some discussions. So basically, our malware requires the microphone permissions. Well, so we, we found that the social apps and the communica communication apps in Google Play, uh, most of these apps require the microphone permissions. So we implement a malware and upload the Google Play as a uh, social uh, app categories. So the Google approved our uh, apps, but we withdraw once it approved the, the apps. So 
here are some uh, countermeasures. First, we can possibly prevent the usage of microphones in background when sensitive tasks are executed. For example, if a user inputs the uh, pattern lock, we, we can possibly to prevent the, the, pr the microphone to record the uh, voice. And also, we can notify the user uh, when the phone, uh, the microphone, in, in our, are used in the background. And also, we can possibly restrict the frequency range <laughs> that the sound hardware supports. The the most possible approach to uh, defend against the attack is we can randomize the size and the layout of the pattern grid so that the attack cannot possible to build the ground truth to re refer the infer the pattern. Here are only the issues yeah, maybe are maybe usability issues so that the use, user may not be comfortable with the, the randomized layouts. Here are the conclusions. In this work, we uncover a new vulnerability of pattern lock by leveraging speakers and the microphones of device, mobile devices. And we propose a, the attack to crack pattern lock of a, a, a large number of mobile devices by utilizing the, the acoustic signals. And then the evaluation shows that our attack can achieve really high accuracies in recovering the pattern lock with various practical considerations. Uh, that's it. Thank you. So a clarifying question. Basically, for your attack to work, you have to both install malware on the target phone for a while and steal it. Uh, Is that true? Uh, we just uh, require malware installing mobile. In, in well, yes. Yeah. Then you can steal the pin, but how do you apply the pin? Uh, pin? Without the pattern. The pattern. So basically, uh, we assume that the malware is already stored in the phones. So the malware run in the background. So we each can uh, capture the unlock behavior of the users. If yes, but OK, I know your pattern is this. Yes. But if I don't have your phone, what good is it going so to do actually, to me? So actually, this is a good, really good question. So in this room, if some phone is cracked by the, the malware, so we can possibly use our phone to walk around. So we can let the malware to generate the signals if our phone can Capture, capture the signal, then you can see which phone is correct. Then we can possibly have a chance. Well, to so are you saying that your malware can be running on my phone and I can sit next to you and steal your pin? Yeah. Okay, that's a little more realistic. Thank you. One question. So did you try experimenting with like larger grids? So instead of three by three, for example, five by five or something like that? Uh, no, yeah. actually we can check. But you know, if we have more more nodes in a power grid, maybe we can have more accuracy. Because uh, but that's, we, yeah, but that's, that's one thing. The other thing is, uh, so do you have an intuition why if a pattern is more complicated, you get better accuracy? So if uh, with more lines including the patterns, we can obtain more signals, you know, they have, we have different more fragments, then we can possible to analyze more accurate. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. 